Libra singles. Welcome. Doing the singles reading, meet the soulmate read. Um, also call it the four pillars read because what I do is I look at the four pillars. I call it a relationship, the emotional compatibility, uh, intellectual, sexual, and love nature, and uh, core values and lifestyle. And uh, get the uh, eight cards here. It's sort of like the heart spreads eight cards, but this is just if there's no one on your mind. You need to be completely single, totally single. And we're going to read who's coming in. It's always a positive reading because we're simply asking who is the right one for you. So it's not going to be your next ex problem. It's going to be the right one. And that's what makes it an always positive read. It has to do with the question. So this is for the first half of October, 1st to the 15th, call it. And um, typically it's not going to be someone you know. People often tell me it is. Um, I think if it is, it's probably someone who hasn't been a lover and maybe a friend or something. Uh, maybe you've kind of remotely thought about it. I typically want to see this as someone new. So let me know over the next few weeks, guys, um, if you run into this person. I'm going to try to describe them some personality, some personal history, and throw out some astrological placements like key on a lot too as an astrologer half price on uh, transit work right now it's a good deal a lot of stuff going on in the skies and i think a little, uh, we're all being set up most of us for 30 year cycles here so it's a really important time to kind of have a beat on what what we're doing where we're at okay so here we go i'm gonna look at your emotional nature your soulmate first two of wands is gonna be over the Ace of Pentacles. Wow, I like that. Okay. So pretty solid childhood. I read childhood here too. Um, in the intellectual column, Hierophant. Wow. At the top, kind of conscious position. Also this unconscious position, death. Also, wow. Major Akana. Um, big brain on Brad um, here. So, um, hmm, powerhouse person. Um, I usually pick up the sun here. Um, let me move on. I'm going to pick up the moon here in the emotional part. And I'm getting big time going to be an earth moon. Let me just leave it at that right now. So I get from feeling. This is in the sexual position. Seven of Pentacles. Uh, don't uh, let uh, this trigger you with death or two, three of swords. It's not like a normal reading. No one's going to leave anybody. But sexually, we got the seven of pentacles over the eight of pentacles. So definitely Earth, Venus, and Earth, Mars. It usually means they're going to have the same Venus and Mars. The way I read this. Um, let's see what we got for lifestyle core values. Seven of cups. And over the Knight of Wands. Seven of Cups over the Knight of Wands. They sell something. They're salesmen, saleswomen, um, most likely. This is a powerful Knight of Wands at the volcano behind them. Um, wow. They could have kind of a split, I don't want to say personality, remember this is your person. Um, but with this Knight of Wands down here, they could do something physical, eh, like a law enforcement, um, could even be uh, in the military here and something like that, security. Um, but with the Seven of Cups, it kind of implies to me that they're very different. Like the way they approach their work is very like professional. I mean, if it was sales, it would be something that they would be like totally committed to. And they would probably be like a team leader or something or a regional manager or something like this. And I think they have like a distinct... Uh, separation like they have in and it's probably not conscious but it might be um they deal with very smart person here um back into that but um you know they may be aware they do this and it's like um you know when i go to work i 
and I'm this person, my work person. And when I'm home, I'm this Seven of Cups person. Um, it's kind of like a goofball. I get the feeling too, like if, if people at work like ever like came to this person's house, I get the feeling maybe that wouldn't be that often happening. And I think they probably don't like like to have big big parties around the house anyway. Um, they would see with the Seven of Cups that they're just kind of quirky and offbeat. They may have like odd collections or odd interests that people might consider odd, you know, um, in something they do. Um, but that means a lot to them. They sort of can lose their self in it. You know, could, I just can't think of anything that would be an example. You know, they may collect vinyl albums of a certain uh, age or genre or something or, um, you know, uh, collect some kind of odd memorabilia that other people think are toys and they're actually uh, valuable and meaningful in some way that you have to be a collector to appreciate and understand. Uh, that kind of energy going on there. Uh, emotionally, I like it because I don't see a bad childhood. Uh, you see here, this is the two of wands. It's not about deciding here. Um, it's just a good feeling. You know, I get it. If you just look at that, just forget tarot. How does that make it feel? It feels pretty good. You know, dawn's coming up. You got your little backpack there. You're young and strong. I was a backpacker all my life. Birds are starting to fly. Imagine them chirping. It's in the morning. And you're getting ready to go and you know um, you've got a choice here where to go but either way you're going to this beautiful day here uh, <clears throat> and then with the ace of Pentacles this is such a sincere powerful energy I, I'm just thinking Capricorn moon because this would be someone that's so solid you know and, and sometimes like cat moons Aquarius moons there's a lot to be said for being emotionally stable um, in terms of the moon. You know, I got a cancer moon, I can tell you. Um, you know, I cry a lot. <laughs> and, and when you got a cat moon, you're probably not going to cry that much. You know, it's going to be hard to get emotionally overwhelmed. Um, so I see someone being really grounded uh, coming out of this. And grounded in, in their childhood. And they may have one other sibling that's significant. You know, like there's only two. Uh, amongst them but I think the two of them weren't real close and if they're gonna you know they tell you the stories ask them how it was and it's like you know their brother their sister there's a little age difference or something they had their thing and you know they were fine you know but they they weren't like uh, uh, close ages where they just palled around all the time and so you see them coming out you know with a lot of independence around them um, and a lot of sincerity like um, they're not going to say anything if they don't mean it, you know, uh, so there probably wouldn't be any flippancy about them, uh, no, it, really no indecisiveness about them, no duplicity about them, um, anything like that, like, um, and that's what they need to feel secure, it's just solid, like everything's on the up and up. I get the feeling too, when we go into the hair fan and death here in their intellectual position, um, they would really quickly sniff out any insincerity and probably snuff it out. And when I see the suns here, um, I got to think Scorpio with the death card um, coming, over, coming under the hair font. Um, that's how I would go with this rather than Taurus. Because I think this person has a really great mind. And I think they, they kind of have a higher mind. Um, they have pretty good childhood. They have, they have a lot of balance about them. A lot of stability. Their parents didn't undermine them. Their parents gave them, you know, good self-esteem. And uh, were mostly available and everything. They lucked out. You know, that's kind of rare these days, right? Um, and their uh, Scorpio is very strong. And a very, I want to say high vibing, because with the hair font, you know, uh, it's not really religion with them. Um, it's just, uh, they're not the Scorpios that are just fixed on death and uh, intense sex or something like that. Um, they're really into the eighth house stuff. So really into tarot, really into astrology, really into manifestation, witchcraft hidden occulted things 
the Kabbalah. I don't know. They're deep into this stuff I get with this Hierophant over the death card here. Um, and remember, they're terribly grounded with this moon, probably even a well-placed Capricorn moon. Somewhere where it's, uh, maybe it's an apex planet uh, orb in their chart, the very top of their chart. Um, try to think how they would be. Just very high vi vivational, you know, this person. And, you know, when you're around them, probably they're not going to be too uh, outgoing about the information they give. They probably do the typical... Uh, Scorpio thing where they're very good at bringing you out and letting you open up and express yourself uh, but they're definitely the kind of person that would be reading into situations all kinds of things you know one way you can kind of test this with someone you're out on a date fooling around uh, say to them like this it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do anyway you know it's like hey see that couple over there what do you think their story is you know it's just a Rushire test. You don't know, you know what the hell the story is. Maybe you do. <laughs> You're psychic, you know. But you can sometimes pick up a lot. Well, this person might actually pick up a lot. But they'll be looking at everything, the way they're dressed and their body language and what kind of place it is and how old they are and all of this stuff. And um, you might get a little insight into how their mind works because, you know, it, they might go into... Well, you know, he's uh, the one that tends to like to uh, lead the way, uh, but I think she's resentful about it because she feels like she needs to have more uh, sway in the relationship and uh, just go deep into all the psychological things. You know, uh, this one's, uh, he's uh, insecure and he's overcompensating. And you can tell because of this and well, I like that. And it's like, you might just be looking at and saying, oh, they look cute. They're in love. I'm not making fun of you. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, because <laughs> uh, um, so, I mean, you're Scorpio too. You might just rebuild, you might go to town on them here, <laughs> guys. So, um, Seven of Pentacles in the Eight of Pentacles in, in the sexual position and that's going to make them uh, it's going to be Virgo that's going to give them this Virgo energy Virgo Mars and Virgo Venus here so um, in terms of love and sex it's uh, really wanting to please and really wanting to do the work um, it's not exactly submissive. Um, I get to feel like if they felt like it, they needed to be um, dominant in order to please you, that's what they would do. Um, but this would be someone that was very concerned about uh, how you feel. They want you to feel secure, you to feel loved. Um, they want you to feel good sexually. Um, I think is what's going on there with this. Uh, so in a, uh, even though they have a Scorpio sun, I don't get that it would be that kind of intense uh, sort of probing uh, sex that's Scorpionic, Platonic. Um, and it's not definitely that fire kind of uh, sexual energy, but very grounding, you know, with the uh, Earth, Moon, too, probably Capricorn. Um, that can be really good, too. Um, it's sort of like for being a Sag, it's sort of like they sort of put out your fire but it's kind of hot kind of in a good way it's like you come in they just sort of absorb you and you calm down and uh it could be really intense and really sensual so i would say their kind of love making be uh sensual might be the word best describe it here um and then in terms of love it'd be that virgo access service uh, stuff um and uh really showing a genuine interest in your well-being um, in every way, you know, like the doctor's office, dentist, uh, you know, is your car okay? Do you need to, we need to do any work on it? Uh, you know, are you okay? <laughs> are you taking care of yourself? Do we need to buy you some more vitamins or uh, that kind of thing? And then, you know, uh, for what they do with the Knight of Wands and the Seven of Cups, you know, I gave it a shot. I just think there's some kind of sales, some kind of inspirational. I mean, another thing this could be is a life coach, uh, someone that uh, would go in and 
and be like a cheerleader, but I, I get the feeling they could serve that role in some kind of corporate capacity, you know? And I get the feeling like it's like they, it's not really, they don't really see this as being them, you know? It's just, they're really gonna make that distinction. You'd be like, well, that's just my job. Yes, I do, but that's just my job. It's not like who I am. I'm really this guy that collects uh, jade turtles from Indonesia that were only made in the 1700s. <laughs> I like to know everything about them and their value and everything. Something really kind of, maybe that's not that quirky, but something a little quirky too. So anyway, I think that gives us some idea uh, where that's going. And <laughs> give me a like, thumbs up, share, tell a friend, tell a friend, do subscribe, I do appreciate it. And let me know in the next couple of weeks during this beginning of October, if this person shows up, because I do can see this being someone be someone new, you know, you're wide open here, and there's someone coming in brand new, and I hopefully you're going to say, oh my God, I think this is the woman, the guy that Dave described in the um, Meet the Soulmate read. Thank you, guys.